So hi, everybody. Um, thank you so much for joining the call. Uh, my name is Charles Shichinda, and uh, we're very pleased to have you in the call. Um, so to start off, um, we will be um, going through um, a discussion about pretty much youth perspectives uh, from the African and, and European youths uh, for a water-wise future. And it is our um, belief and um, trust that you'll be able to um, gather a couple of um, learning aspects from this um, event as young water professionals. And, and the key objective really is that we'll be able to connect, uh, be able to have um, a very meaningful chat on how uh, we can foster a water wise future as young people. As I mentioned, my name is Charles Chinda, and I will be uh, moderating this session. So, just to go through a couple of generic um, housekeeping rules for this event. Um, the first one is you might want to know the this event has been recorded and it will be made available on demand. The next one is that um, the speakers will be responsible for securing copyrights permissions. Um, so you might want to be aware of that. And as well as um, just ensure that you are on mute, um, just to ensure that they in, there's no disruptions as the speakers speak. Um, you might also want to... Somebody is uh, unmuted there. Yeah, so please just ensure that your mic is on mute just to avoid any disruptions uh, during the event. You may also want to post your questions in the chat box or the moderator for a specific panel session. We will be able to ask you to mute yourself and ask your question. Um, so just ensure to be able to do that. You may also want to um, introduce yourself. I think it's always really good to get to know you. Um, so who you are, which country you're from, and what you do um, uh, at the minute. I've already mentioned that you'd be good that you, you, put, you put your mic on mute and as well as <clears throat> your camera, <clears throat> excuse me, your camera is in the bottom left corner. So just make note of that. Um, there is no need for you to share anything. Um, so that will be um, run from our end. So just a little bit of a, um, a picture there of the moderators and panelists for this session. So there's myself, Charles Chinda. Uh, we have Isabella, we've got Chris, uh, we've got Naomi, we've got Inez, we've got Jacob, and we've got Heiss. And as for the agenda, we will have a welcome um, and a bit of an introduction and meeting objectives uh, from Jacob, who I'm gonna introduce in a short while. We will also have, so Jacob will pretty much go through uh, a brief introduction of what the United Nations uh, Water Conference entails. We will then move on to a bit of an overview of the organizations um, and their youth activities. Uh, right after, we will then delve into a panel discussion, which is the first one that will look at youth engagement at the United Nations Water Conference, uh, pretty much gathering a couple of mixed perspectives. We'll proceed on to comfort break. It's always really good to um, decompress a little bit. And then we'll crack on with a second panel um, where I will begin to gather thoughts um, from the youth around um, post the United Nations Water Conference. And then we'll move on to a summary of the discussions and then Isabella will come through and give the closing remarks and a bit of an update from the International Water Association. So without further ado, we will, I, I have the pleasure to introduce um, Jacob. So Jacob um, is an environmental engineer. Uh, he works as a water quality assurance provider at Ghana Water Company. Um, Jacob is the chair of the International Water Association Young Water Professionals Steering Committee. So Jacob will take us through an introduction to the United Nations Water Conference. Over to you, Jacob. Hey, thank you, Charles. Um, I'm always happy to, to 
to be in such a meeting with young water professionals. Um, it's a pleasure to see the future of the water sector right in your eyes every day. Um, today, we're going to have a brief discussion, um, just as Charles said, about um, learnings, the perspectives um, from the different regions, Africa and then Europe on how we can solve our water challenges globally. Next slide. Yes. I believe that um, we've all in one form or the other heard about the UN 2023 Water Conference. I think for about two years, we kept on hearing about its objectives, what it plans to achieve and all that. And it's come to pass. So all the things that were said in those days, all the learnings, all the perspectives from different people all over the world, what are we going to do with it? Yes, so I'll give you a brief introduction of what it is. Next slide. Okay. So basically the conference was built on three pillars. Um, that is inclusiveness, cross-sectorial action oriented, so inclusive means that um, you are looking at um, both ver vertical and horizontal inclusiveness, where you have everybody coming on board, everybody in the social system, um, both users, service providers, um, policy makers, everybody having a say, everybody contributing from their perspectives to whatever that um, we wanted to achieve. Then we have cross sectorial. Um, most of the times you hear people saying that the water sector likes to keep to itself and not engage with other sectors. But um, this conference sought to look at um, how the finance sector is supporting the water sector, how the water sector is engaging with different sectors in the economy and um, action oriented. Um, yeah, we've spoken for a while. Um, since the first um, uh, water conference 47 years ago, um, we've talked, we've, talk, we've talked about a problem, we've proposed solutions, but how well are we implementing them? So this conference also sought to look at um, how we can put those suggestions and those things that we talk about into action in order to get the results that, that we need. Next slide. Yes. So here you see how um, everything was planned. Everything um, looked at the different um, um, uh, sectors, looked at the different um, people that, was, that, that are supposed to participate um, and how you can engage in the conference and its aftermath activities here. Yeah. Yes, so the conference had six plenaries where member states um, made speeches. Um, some spoke about the progress that they are making in their, in their countries when it comes to WASH. Um, others also gave um, speeches about what they plan to do in the future and how they can support other people. Um, so it's, it was very interesting. Um, interesting species, speeches, very inspirational, um, and a lot to learn. Then there were interactive dialogues, um, very interactive. Uh, people have, have described uh, uh, how the title of the whole session kind of um, looks like is the other way around when you are sitting in those sessions because it's, everybody giving speeches, not really interacting with each other. So yeah, there are five, there were five dialogues over, over the two days. And um, also they spoke about different um, um, aspects when it comes to the wash um, sector and how best we are making progress and what can be done moving forward and how to implement those things after the conference. So, next slide, if I'm not done. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Um, thank you, Jekyll. 
Um, that was that was a really good overview of the United Nations Water Conference and um, its objectives and what it entailed. Obviously, that it should be inclusive, action oriented, and very cross sectoral. So, thank you for that overview. So, cracking on, on with our agenda, uh, we will then move on to the second um, bit of it, where we'll have an overview of the youth organizations and their activities. So without further ado, I will invite Ines Breda. Um, Ines is the product and process manager at Eurowater, and um, she serves as secretary of the Young Water Professional Steering Committee for the International Water Association. She is also a board member and treasurer for Young Water Professionals Denmark. Ines will be uh, running us through the International Water Association and Grand Falls Fellowship and pretty much what it entails. Over to you, Ines. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I hope that you can hear me clearly. Thank you for the presentation, Charles. And so nice to, to see so many people here, also from so many different countries. Um, so uh, what I will try to do, because we will go on a deep dive on the, on the fellowship later on, what I'll try to do here is to give you an idea of the International Water Association and how somehow it felt logical um, for IWA to, to support youth engagement at the United Nations uh, Water Conference last March. So um, IWA is a network with over 16,000 members. Uh, we are uh, part of uh, a broad range of um, knowledge areas. Uh, that are spread within research institutions, universities, consultants, regulators, utilities, and industry. Uh, we are spread across the globe, uh, and we are especially proud to gain a strong momentum with youth engagement in the southern globe. Um, there are several ways that we somehow exchange knowledge across the, the network. But one of the ways that for me has been clearly a way forward has been through specialist groups and kind of opportunities that IWA starts to promote within the program that allows youth to connect uh, across the globe. Um, uh, if you could move to the next slide, I will have, I'll be so proud to show you how youth is actually being spread. Um, I, you have no idea how happy I am to share this picture because we are now over 40, um, representing over 40 chapters, so 40 countries across the globe where we have a young water professional that understands what IWA is trying to do. It establishes a connection within communities that promotes um, communication across stakeholders in water, um, especially here with research and, and work with water utilities that for IWA has always been and, and specifically stressed in the last strategy, uh, a key point. Um, I'll, I'll give you an example of how something like this can look like, but for Denmark, for example, where I'm sitting, the Young World Professional started in 2014, Next year, it will be the 10th anniversary and we have over 500 members at a national level. And the, the happiness that we have at each of our national conferences, it just um, ensures that the community continues to grow and the knowledge is then spread across generations because now we have people that used to be young water professionals, but now they have these positions within the different companies and water utilities or research groups that somehow see youth within the country. And this is so important. Um, next slide, please. So, so how these opportunities occur? Well, many, many ways. So one, one of the ways is actually this direct link with uh, leaders, right? Because the network is cross-generational and we try to take advantage of that with regards to connecting generations. The, the engagement through leaders is very direct. So uh, both either through the events that we have or uh, through uh, our IWA Connect Plus, which is a social network that allows us internally to connect with each other. So this um, allows not only some career development uh, and, but also this network exchange, the expertise, 
try to figure out what is working in one place, but it's not working in another. How can we facilitate that? We have access to the latest advancements of the water sector. This is strongly because we are um, um, embedded within the IWA publishing, which means that every scientific article, for example, in water research um, is, is spread out throughout the community and, and we can have people who can translate that knowledge from within the network. Um, and it's this what we believe it gives a tremendous professional development. So what was the latest opportunity that I was very excited about? It was the Youth Action for SDG 6 Fellowship. And what was that? Well, Grunfos, as a private company, saw the benefit of supporting youth through the International Water Association and uh, both in, uh, created a program that sponsored uh, 14 young professionals from across the globe. And we're talking about the diversity of, of both gender and geographies and backgrounds. Um, and um, those, those 14 were able to attend the United Nations Water Conference. We are in continuous work. This is part of one of the activities we are developing. So we are in continuous work to try to translate and bring the knowledge and the learnings from that conference to other peers. And we will meet two times again this year, one in September here in Denmark and another time in Kigali at the Water Development Congress um, in December. Um, and this is a continuous work that we'll be doing. Each one of us have their own um, projects that we're also trying to bring forward uh, and kind of creating synergies with each other um, for, for, for the advancement and acceleration of water action. I have to tell you that the, the five days that I was lucky enough to be at the United Nations Water Conference were five days where I was truly smiling every day. And not because I didn't know the challenge, that I didn't understand what was happening. The reason was that I knew that I was surrounded by people that wanted to make change. And it was important for me to see who they were and to, to connect with them. Um, we will deep dive after later on on this. This is more to, uh, for you to understand how IWA and GUNFOS collaborated and how this made a lot of sense for IWA to, to connect with the United Nations, moving from research to practice, but also taking into account the community-driven research, inclusive science, and of course, how science can shape policies. Thank you so much. I think I'll pass the word to Noemi. Great, thank oh, you. No. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be heist next. Uh, thank you very much, Ines. And I think it's really good to see all those vast opportunities um, that I, IWA has to offer. And probably suffice to say that it really provides a platform for young people like ourselves to be able to connect, um, exchange knowledge, and be able to um, develop our professions, our professions going forward. So that's really good. Um, I should mention that we were supposed to have um, the New York community from the African um, Parliament for Water, but unfortunately Danielle was um, was not able to join us last minute. She had a little bit of um, um, a bit of an inconvenience there, so um, we will we will be cracking on anyway. And um, without further ado, I would then like to invite um, Heis uh, Vanes from Webmakers United uh, to be able to give us an overview of his organizations and what they do. So Heis is a young water professional focused on sustainable urban water management and drinking water supply. Um, he currently works for VEI in Kampala, Uganda um, to reduce water losses in the water dispute network. But besides that, um, he is a strong advocate of the 30-30-30, I think, which you'll be talking about, uh, its commitment and, um, and youth engagement in the water sector on behalf of World Makers United. Um, over to you, Heis. All right. Thank you for the uh, for the introduction, Charles. Also, thank you to the uh, IWA team for uh, giving this opportunity and organizing this event. Um, so, yeah, I'm the Youth Network Manager with uh, Wavemakers United Foundation. Um, if we can go to the next slide, please. So, what we are doing with Wavemakers United is we are um, a youth organization uh, focusing on students, at least and young professional working uh, in the water or climate sector. Um, and I think this is also something that, that is a big uh, 
difference with other youth organizations in the sector is that we are really focused on the athletes as well, because we think that athletes in the water sector, such as uh, kite surfers, wind surfers, rowers, um, they can be great advocates of water quality because they experience the water uh, every day during their training and games. And they are often uh, looked up to by, uh, by young people. So in that way, we really want to inspire the young people. Next slide, please. So this community, um, students, at least a young professional, we want them to focus on, uh, well, they're working in the water sector already. And we challenge them to think about these challenges like too much water, too little water, too dirty water, water safety. And there's one missing now. Let me see which is it is. And the water management. Um, and what we do to help them is, next slide. Yes, is that we want to educate and empower this community to make changes and take actions in the, in the climate and water field. Uh, we do this through various programs, such as setting up local chapters. Um, but we also added a commitment to the Water Action Agenda, uh, which is to educate 1 million young people every year until the year 2030. And this is what we're doing through our SDG toolkits. Um, that are freely available to the uh, local chapters and, and anybody who would like to use them to educate young people. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so what our legacy, uh, what we think our legacy is going to be is that we have local uh, communities who also operate on a global scale. Um, so they, they know the challenges, they know solutions on a local scale which can be applied to the global level as well. And this global level, like for example, um, conferences such as in New York, uh, if we attend that, we can take that global knowledge of the big organizations and exchange it again with the local communities to empower and educate them on what's going on and give them more, um, more to work with basically, uh, to work on the challenges they face. So in that way, we you know, work uh, back and forwards with local global uh, youth communities and try to strengthen them to solve uh, climate and water challenges. Next slide. So specifically talking about New York, one of the major things we did here uh, also to do this global local uh, uh, interchange basically is that we had the final of the UN 2023 Game Changer Challenge that we organized together with IHG Delft. Um, so what we did here is we, at the Stockholm World Water Week last year, we launched the challenge and we asked uh, young professionals, uh, students to come up with innovative ideas that are implementable um, to, that, that solve the, uh, the SDGs using water, um, basically. And we got subscriptions. We got innovative ideas from 201 teams uh, from 62 different nationalities. So that was quite big. And I think Ines was very proud when she was talking about all the IWA chapters, which was very impressive as well. I can say the same for this. I'm very proud to see that we reached uh, so many different countries and we had so many teams that were very inspired to contribute to our challenge. Um, so we launched it in Stockholm and we had the final in New York. Uh, the final was not the end though. Uh, I will tell you a bit more afterwards. Uh, but the winning team uh, chosen by both first a uh, youth jury and then a, uh, a senior jury. Uh, the winning team, um, what they basically uh, developed was a system that it makes uh, salt water into fresh water using algae. And these LJ can also be afterwards used for, um, for fuel production, for biofuel production. And obviously it takes in a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, CO2. So it cleans the air basically as well. So that's a winning idea, but that's not the only winning idea. We had a lot of great, great innovative ideas. Um, and that's why we developed a marketplace for all those ideas to be taken up by organizations that want to utilize those ideas and implement them help them further develop. Uh, so that's where we are now. Um, next slide, please. Um, and we also host the 303030 uh, Youth Target event in New York, in the Dutch consulate. Um, we had a, a great event uh, with great speakers who are also present here, such as Ines and Noemi. Uh, thanks again. Um, 
the, well, the event was in the Dutch consulate, so there were quite a bit of Dutch people, but we had a lot of other people as well, um, young people, older people, all interested to find out what this was about. Um, we're going to be explaining a bit more about the concept later. I think Noé is going to talk about it as well. Um, so we focused on identifying those gaps in youth inclusion. So we asked the audience, what are your challenges that you're facing? And we got some answers like, well, there's a lack of funding. Um, the education system doesn't really allow me, allow me to get straight into a job. Uh, I need to get experience somewhere first and then uh, do like an internship. So the job uh, is not really aligning with the education system. Um, and we also heard that, that the uh, barriers for youth inclusion are not only youth barriers, but they are applicable to a lot of different people as well. Um, and then we try to, to come up, to come over these, uh, to overcome these challenges. Uh, for example, with just George Newton, who knows a lot about youth inclusion and jobs. Um, so to, together we had a great session. It was wrapped up by Mina Guli, who was very inspiring. Um, and yeah, we'll talk, I'll talk more about the contents of it later. Uh, this was my introduction. Fabulous. Um, thank you very much, um, Heis, uh, for that overview. Uh, without further ado, I uh, will then pass on to Isabella to, to run the face panel discussion um, of the event. That will pretty much look at youth engagement at the United Nations World Conference. Uh, and pretty much the objective is to really have very mixed perspectives. So over to you, Isabella. Thank you, Charles. And I'm quite happy to be here today, especially, wow, we have representations from all over the countries and I can see some interactions uh, in the chat. And I'm really proud to be also responsible for the youth engagement within IWA and this amazing fellowship that we have in partnership with Granfels. I am also a young water professional, at least for other two years. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm quite looking forward to continue supporting and promoting youth engagement in this high-level decision-making process on this. And taking this into consideration, I would like to invite Noemi and as well as Charles. I know that Noemi has already been um, uh, presented this, but I'd like to say some words about Charles. Charles is one of our fellows um, part of this IWN Grandfather's Youth uh, Action for SDG 6. And he's a civil and wash engineer. And he's an uh, author, yet he's working an amazing book. And I'm looking forward to, to read it soon. And he currently works at British uh, Water and he's head up with the British Water International Program. And considering this, let me move the slides here a little. Noemi, are you ready? I am. Perfect. Hello. Thank you again for the invitation. Um, so we can already go to the second slide, please. OK, so this is our panel. We are going to focus on youth engagement at the UN Water 23 uh, conference. Next slide, please. Here we are. Um, so um, I thought that maybe it would be interesting to show you the different ways uh, that we have been contributing because none of us has been actually uh, doing the same task uh, in the World Youth Parliament for Water. Uh, some of us, uh, as uh, Jacob uh, presented earlier, have been joining some uh, special um, uh, event uh, and side events uh, as well uh, inside of the uh, UNHQ and outside of uh, the UNHQ, uh, such as the Water House, uh, as Khaj uh, also just mentioned. So there was plenty different way of contributing. And uh, I thought I will give you an highlight of my uh, contribution. So um, the World Youth Parliament for Water, we actually um, uh, focus from, or as well, the global to local engagement. We have uh, chapters uh, at the national level, but also regional chapters. And I am uh, more uh, in charge of the global uh, partnership, uh, strategic partnership uh, aspect of our advocacy uh, journey for more inclusion of uh, young water voices in uh, water governance and um, water management decision-making processes and spaces 
so um, at the UN Water Conference, uh, we uh, joined prior of it because it was a, it, it's a long process. Things happen before and after uh, a conference in general or a COP. Um, so we joined the uh, task force uh, at UN Water, um, the task force on World Water Day and World Toilet Day. And as we even became a uh, co-coordinator with Aquafed, Neil is here in the call, uh, but also uh, UNESCO and WHO and uh, UNICEF. Um, UN Water, quickly for uh, some people that uh, don't know, it's a, coordinate, a coordinating mechanism um, based in uh, Gen Geneva and New York. Uh, but um, And they, they focus on any... UN agencies, but also uh, organization. Uh, it's a really multi-stakeholder um, um, way of coordinating and, and making sure there's a there's a open dialogue and, and space on different task force and expert um, um, focus, uh, thematic focus uh, related to water, right? So our um, task force was on World Water Day, World Toilet Day, as I said, and this year was about accelerating change. Um, as you can see, uh, the narrative was around the hummingbird um, that we can all um, participate with our small uh, drop. I really invite you to uh, look at the website. Uh, you can make also your contribution. It was again prior to the UN Water, but it is continuing because it's from World Water Day to uh, World Toilet Day, the 19th of November. Uh, there, more concretely, what have we done? Um, we receive, uh, thanks to uh, UN uh, com Global Communication Offices, uh, some uh, origami birds, I mean birds from schools, uh, from Ghana, from Sweden, from, um, I think, Japan as well. Um, and we actually hang those hummingbirds uh, in the in some trees at the main venue and the main entrance of uh, the UN Water Conference uh, and the, the UNHQ basically, um, and um, there we allowed people to read uh, what the even younger generation than us here in this call, uh, so children, school, primary school children, uh, think about water and 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 also see what could accelerate uh, change. Um, it was really cute uh, because some of them were really just being, I will listen, Mama, when she said to turn off the, the tap while I'm brushing my teeth. <laughs> really um, things like that. But as we said, the narrative, it's um, there's no small drop uh, to participate to save our uh, most precious resources. Um, and then it was uh, also uh, located near the SDG Media Zone, and we also had the opportunity to give um, a talk uh, at the Media Zone where you see this, this booth with all the SDGs, so our uh, was obviously about SDG 6, and there how, again, uh, what, um, the inclusion of young people um, in institutional processes, uh, in the conference in general, uh, it's important. So that's it for this one. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, we also had the opportunity to join uh, at the uh, AU delegation, um, uh, the um, a side event organized about uh, youth-led dialogue in between uh, Pacific Island and African, uh, African uh, countries. Uh, so it was organized by the external partnership relation of the AU, uh, and it was the goal was to have an open dialogue in between, uh, with different sorry uh, region uh, perspective, on uh, the five uh, thematics um, uh, dialogues of the UN Water Conference. So Asmik uh, on the left, who is the president of the European Youth Parliament for Water, she focused on the water and cooperation. Uh, dialogue and her um, contribution was really uh, to stress the importance, stress the importance, sorry, of the peace aspect of the transboundary uh, management of the water uh, resources and the cooperation between riparian states. Uh, she is from Armenia, so obviously she could share some experience uh, in between uh, this topic and how also important it is that young people. Uh, as a um, mediator, catalyst of change, uh, sh and the next generation, of course, 
should be included in this. And for myself, I was focusing on the Water Action Decade uh, dialogue and my contribution um, brought up uh, the attention on our demands, the fill up the glass uh, campaign demands that some of you probably contributed, IWA certainly contributed uh, in this process. Um, on uh, the 30, 30, 30 youth target, so having, making sure that we have um, a clear target uh, of inclusion on, of young people in different level and different uh, decision making processes. So, for example, at river basin uh, level, for sure, but also on government uh, delegation going to conferences. Uh, panel discussion, um, CWE is already doing this. They have a golden standard when they make sure that they include uh, one young professional or one young uh, advocate uh, in, their, um, in their panel as a speaker. Um, so yeah, and also, of course, sorry, I forgot the second part of it, um, align with the demands of uh, the states and what the states uh, pushed uh, the demand of youth uh, envoy on water uh, collaborating uh, with uh, the future uh, UN uh, special envoy on water. Next slide, please. Yeah, and so it links to also the, the previous uh, point about the global youth movement for water. We, um, it was a ongoing process. Uh, it's been a long, uh, long month and years of preparation. It started with the uh, ninth uh, World Water Forum in Dakar, where we uh, launched this idea of merging and building a global youth movement for water with uh, also the midterm review at the Dushanbe uh, and of course the UN Water Conference. And now we are preparing for uh, the 10th World Water Forum in Bali. Um, so with the global youth movement, what did we do? Uh, we participated to position some young people as speakers with also uh, the strong partnership and, and uh, um, support uh, of uh, the International Secretariat of Water. Um, we and myself uh, uh, participated to daily briefing at the Water House. So we gathered uh, some uh, young people to make sure that for some who experienced this sort of event for the first time, um, that they, they seek guidance and some capacity building to make sure that we were all aligned, to make sure that they will uh, know where to go, um, any question they had, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then, uh, of course, the production of our policy paper with uh, according to our youth perspective on the five interactive dialogue of the conference. And um, yeah, I think uh, this is it for me. Uh, as you can see on the last uh, picture, um, most of the young people were there in this picture. So it's quite impressive. And if Joe if, if is in this call uh, to notice um, so many young people, uh, because um, yeah, unlike uh, COP, uh, and, and convention, we didn't have a, a strong youth uh, institutionalized um, uh, body, right? Uh, it was all diverse uh, network and, and here it's again the continuation of this collaboration. And um, yeah, so it's quite noticeable. Uh, and thanks to the Kingdom of the Netherlands and Tajikistan for their support. And, and yeah, this is a quite accomplishment. Um, that's it for me, thank you. Thank you, Noemi. Um, Noemi, before handing over to, to Charles on this, um, to what extent have you met your objectives to influence decision makers during the UN Water Conference? How were you, how do you see this process? Do you believe that you have achieved your objectives? Mm, I mean, uh, you can always do more. <laughs> That's one thing. Um, but uh, we have to acknowledge, especially the last point, uh, that I, I stressed and I highlight. Um, usually when you see some uh, Yongo pictures or Gibbon pictures, like um, most of the time there's really less people who receive sponsorship and, and accreditation and, and were being able to be in that picture of the event. And I really think this is uh, also in terms of uh, diversity, of course, some, um, 
as always, but not only because they are youth, also because uh, this is the case, it was in the US, so experienced visa issues, uh, but um, there was quite a um, broad representation and, and inclusion. Uh, also, before, for the one who couldn't be there, the Secretariat, uh, it's not in my slide, but organized regional um, preparatory process um, of the conference and, and, and gathered the opinion, knowing in advance that it would be more complicating from others, uh, for some than others, sorry. Um, so in terms of um, our lobbying, uh, when we started in Dakar, um, I, I don't, like you can never know um, if the country organizing uh, wanted to have so many uh, young people involved. I, I do know because we had several talks with Hank Ovink and this this man, this uh, envoy uh, on water of the United uh, of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Sorry, really believe in 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 young people um, voice uh, in the water sector and other water related uh, sector. But yeah. Um, it's quite an accomplishment. Uh, IWA and Grunfos and also participated in that with their call for the the their this um, Grunfos uh, fellowship. So um, yeah, we 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 succeeded, I think, um, in making sure that young people should uh, be included. And yeah, we can always do better, but we have to acknowledge as well our little win, in my opinion. Thank you, Noemi, for this. And I do agree with you on this. So, Charles, um, I have already done your introduction part, and but I do have a, also a question for you. You're originally from Zambia, and you're currently living here in the UK, quite close to London, by the way. And you attend the conference as part of the fellowship. How was your involvement at the UN Water Confer Conference meaningfully to your work and career objectives? Were you able to expand your network of African young professionals at the conference? Yeah, no, thanks. Thanks, Isabella. Um, I think to, to kind of really tackle that question um, in two parts. So uh, with regards to my involvement, um, in the in the conference as part of the IWN Grand Force Fellowship, um, I would say that it was, um, in many considerable ways, very meaningful to my work and career objectives. In that I was able to be part of um, a, a range of thematic discussions, um, so from youth engagement to gender, for instance, um, I was part of discussion that looked at the nexus um, on pollution sanitation, climate change, and water quality, all the way to the economics of water and, and water diplomacy. So uh, these then create an opportunity for me to be able to uh, contribute my ideas, but as well as be able to learn. Um, um, and then as a result, it, it really was able to, you know, really give me that kind of exposure to be able to meet world leaders, have a conversation on on pressing issues. Um, and, and I think very broadly and significant as well, I believe, was that I was able to, you know, make my voice known, but also um, add my presence, you know, as a person, um, as a form of advocacy for a water-wise future to which young people are actively and inequitably a part of as, as future water leaders. So I think that was a key aspect. And um, um, I think off my mind, one key session that comes to mind there was a session on the economics of water. When the economics of water, for instance, that was being chaired by the United Nations uh, major groups, and as well as the Global Commission on the Economics of Water, and that session in its in its respect served as um, a consultative process to be able to gather thoughts and ideas, which would then result into uh, a final report for the uh, Global Commission on Economics of Water, which pretty much captures the value of water and that document, which is um, earmarked to be released next year, 2024, we use that will then serve as a basis for governments as well as private sector, pretty much uh, players in the water sector to be able to use um, and be able to implement across across different kinds of sectors where um, water is of, of really, really um, great importance. Um, so 
that was that was my involvement. Um, I was part of other discussions on youth engagement and, and gender as well. Um, so that was really good. But then getting on to um, if whether I was able to expand my network you know, of African young water professionals um, and pretty much the broader network as well. Um, I would say that to a considerable degree I was um, because that week in New York was pretty much intense week. Um, and um, it was more likely that you were able to have more meaningful interactions and discussions with the people that are part of the sessions where you were participating, either you were speaking or you were a rapporteur. Uh, but I did, I did manage to meet a couple of um, um, really amazing people doing great stuff um, on the continent, uh, which was really good. Um, so all the way from, you know, uh, people from the um, the African Youth uh, Parliament for Water um, to, to, to all the way to, you know, young water professionals doing great stuff in South Africa, um, in Mali as well, um, in Senegal. Um, so, so I had pretty much a really good network of people to meet out there. Uh, but that's how I would really frame my engagement as well as being able to build um, a network. I recognize that I think the key aspect here is, as everybody has mentioned, Naomi has echoed that in Exus mentioned as well. Uh, I think inclusivity was a really uh, important aspect of the conference and really getting the youth um, at the fore, um, really getting their voices on the table and being able to have those meaningful discussions and then being able to contribute the ideas. I think that was pretty lovely to see all together. So, yeah, that was pretty much uh, my, my engagement, I'll say, and how I built my network. Thank you, Charles, on this. I'm checking our time, and as we do have some, some time left in this uh, panel, I would like to check some of the questions that we have received in the chat and pass them to Charles and Noemi. We received one question on how are you measuring the success of youth participation at the conference? So Charles and Noemi, how do you measure the success of youth during the conference? I, I can go first on uh, that question. Uh, I think the success with regards to the conference itself, as I mentioned, would pretty much be um, the active participation um, across thematic discussions the water conference. So seeing young people really being part of the discussions was really good. But obviously, um, it goes beyond discussions. Um, you really want to see young people, um, you know, lending a shoulder to the wheel and really kind of uh, making decisions um, that will be able to influence uh, the water sector. But at the conference specifically, my the metric for me would be their level of engagement and the recognition. There was a very sweeping recognition to be able to have young people at the table and have discussions, hear what they have to say, and then carry that forward into the implementation plans, uh, pretty much the water action agenda, which was a mandated outcome of conference. So that would be my, my answer to that question. Naomi, did you have a, an answer for that as well? Thank you, Charles. Noemi? <laughs> I think there would be um, a book you could write about it, Charles. <laughs> but um, uh, in my opinion, um, it all depends what you were trying to, to achieve again, like um, we started from, from, from far, I would say, not, not making sure that uh, we will have that much of young people being included. I, I actually asked Enk, I would be very curious um, in terms of data if it has been one of the conference with the most uh, representation of, uh, of young people. Um, but uh, I guess we'll have those numbers in, in some reports uh, from you and Desa uh, soon too. Um, but it would be interesting that they disagreed the their participation in age uh, range, right? Because uh, it would give us also some information. Because um, not all young people were also in the global youth movement as advocates. I'm sure there was some a national delegation that brought up with them some young professional and under 30 or under 35 years old. Um, also, um, I think uh, it, it might be too soon because if we look at the water action agenda, 
Um, and Neil, you are the best advocate because I know this question came from you. Um, in, in, uh, uh, yeah, what are the results? Who is advocating on what now? Who is putting effort on achieving the commitment that they put in this agenda? Uh, what's our action agenda? And everything needs to 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 be built. Uh, in my opinion, I mean, some commitment. Uh, uh, for example, I'm thinking of the one of Swiss Water Partnership. I don't know if I don't think I've seen anyone from them, but it includes the 30 30 30. They said that they will put 45,000 uh, uh, Swiss franc on this initiative. So we need to follow up on that, and we need to to. To see with them, uh, I said me because the World of Parliament for Water signed this commitment too, and ISW too. Um, what is it going to look like, right, uh, in terms of um, uh, inclusion and where this money is going? Uh, but there's not only this one. There's all type of uh, commitments um, that we need to uh, look uh, further, and it's going to be the um, also the. Um, some part of the answer would be in the panel too, uh, because it's the post UN Water Conference, and we are going to talk about some uh, some path uh, that we should explore, all of us. Um, so, key, stay uh, for panel two. <laughs> Thank you, Charles and Noemi, for this. And so, considering that now we are right on time, <laughs> I'd like to to pass over to to Jacob. And Jacob is going to introduce and call for the second panel. Uh, great. Can you hear me? Yes, Jacob, we can hear you. Great, thank you. So having heard from um, our panelists on how your various um, youth organizations engaged in the conference, now we're going to hear from our second panel about how we're going to move forward from the conference. What are the, the lessons that we learned from the conference, the lessons that we learned from the youth engagement with all the other people across different countries, different sectors, different organizations, all those ideas, all those amazing contributions that we picked from the conference. How are we going to use it moving forward? So help me welcome Naomi again, Christian, and Heis to dive deep into this part. Um, so let's continue this. Uh, please, next slide. Now I see them. OK. So for us, um, we will continue our advocacy work, uh, working with the partner we've already have. Um, when I say us, I say World Youth Parliament for Water, but also European Youth Parliament for Water, African Youth Parliament for Water, and all our uh, national uh, chapter um, as well, on um, making sure that we continue to decimate, uh, disseminate, <laughs> disseminate, no, <laughs> disseminate uh, the key messages and uh, the demands at national level, and that we uh, properly uh, lobby governmental institution because at the end of the day it's the member states that also we need to convince uh, to put more effort on on youth uh, as a general on water in general as well uh, and sdg6 uh, efforts um, so yeah to 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 fill up uh, the glass but also to uh, to fill up the gaps because there's a lot of gaps on this so after New York, what we've been doing is that we may we participated to the ECOSOC Youth Forum, and more specifically the SDG six uh, event. Um, we are also all working uh, with IWA on the youth segment of the HLPF uh, special event on SDG six. That's going to happen in July. Uh, we are preparing a youth side event uh, with the Valuing Water Initiative too. Uh, IW again, Wavemakers United, uh, Global Youth Movement in general, um, for Stockholm World Water Week, uh, and uh, we, uh, more specifically, World Youth Parliament for Water, we join again the World Water Day, World Toilet Day Task Force for 2024, because even though 2023 is not over, we are 
already preparing uh, the next topic, uh, which is um, leveraging uh, water for peace, and it links for water uh, cooperation uh, for peace and uh, prosperity. Uh, I forgot to mention that earlier, but um, it always go in, in tango and duo with the publication of the uh, UNESCO WAP team on uh, the UN Water Development Report. Uh, so last year, um, yeah, it was about accelerating change through cooperation and partnership. And this year it's about peace. So it will focus on transboundary cooperation among other subjects and cooperation. And uh, then finally, we are also applying uh, to be a lead on the thematics of um, the 10th World Water Forum, uh, more specifically, uh, considering the agenda again and, and what we do with the Blue Peace uh, Working Group uh, on Water and Cooperation uh, at the transboundary level, but not only. And um, also, we are preparing some side event uh, at the World Water Forum, 10th World Water Forum in Bali. Uh, we will have our General Assembly, like it's been going on for a couple of years now, almost since actually the creation of the World Youth Parliament for Water, we always have our General Assembly happening uh, at the same time. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, just uh, this is my morning uh, coffee cup there. Uh, so for people to keep hope, um, it's not not everything ends at New York. Actually, it's, it's just the beginning and we really need to uh, push our efforts. So the best is yet to come, as we say. Um, we, uh, with the ISW, had uh, some survey and um, after the UN Water Conference where we ask uh, people who attended in person, but not only in person, and to answer a question from Joe earlier in the chat, over 100 uh, people responded that uh, they considered that youth involvement was really significant in the preparatory process at 81.7%. Uh, and during the process at 83%, so which is kind of a very uh, high uh, rate and positive, um, positive feedback. Uh, also, uh, in this respondent, uh, this uh, survey, sorry, we asked them uh, how do they think we should uh, continue the effort uh, after the UN Water Conference, and people suggested that they should be more a regional and local event related to water uh, and, and youth. Uh, there should be also a focus on uh, multiple ways uh, to, to advocate. Uh, but there I would, I would like to add a, a small comment uh, in terms of um, not duplicating uh, the efforts. Uh, we all have our different um, identity as network or youth organization. Um, and I think we, with events like this one, we need to keep uh, good communication and good cooperation uh, between all of us. Um, and yeah, and make sure that together we are stronger in, in to, to make the, the voice of young people in the water sector, professional, non-professional activist advocate, and also linked uh, to climate, of course, looking a bit outside of our SDG ocean too, uh, when we think about the approach of the source to the sea. Um, yeah, so to make sure that we are all in the same, uh, same solution and, and uh, efforts. Um, and I think uh, the last point, yes, sorry, it's to uh, push uh, effort, um, it was already mentioned, uh, for the UN envoy uh, for water, um, because having a UN in, especially envoy for water would allow us to, uh, would allow water, sorry, to have a stronger mandate, and then us as young people to also have another ally to our side that has a political strong mandate too, and strong voice uh, to work with. Um, so this is why we are in strategizing on the different upcoming important events for the water agenda, such as COP28, Stockholm World Water Week, the next World Water Forum, as I mentioned, the SDG Summit, HLBF2. Um, yeah, that we, we are aligned uh, in our um, messages and what we, we would like and that we are all clear and uh, we know uh, uh, what our strategies are.
So that's it. I, I hope it answers some of your questions. Thank you very much, Naomi. Yeah. So we move on to Ice. Yes, thank you. Um, so, so we can we can directly go to the next slide, actually, um, because I would like to start with a question for the audience. Um, if everybody could like close your eyes for thirty minutes and uh, thirty seconds, of course, <laughs> uh, and future your future dream job. Uh, think about things like: Is it a big organization? Is it small? Do you work alone or with others? Uh, what is your role exactly? And how do you make impact that you want to follow up on? So just think about that. All right. I think we had some time to think. Is somebody willing to share uh, the question that is on the next slide, please? Yes. Could somebody tell me what, what do you see when you close your eyes? I just need one. Or I'm going to be pointing somebody out. <laughs> Nobody wants to share. Ah, Jake wants to share. Okay, please go ahead. So when I closed my eyes, um, I saw myself in a big organization trying to um, get people from different um, backgrounds, from different um, organizations, from different countries to work together to solve the, the water and sanitation challenge that we have now. All right, that's nice. Um, somebody else with, with something they saw? No, Amy? For me, it was not a big organization. It was rather a small organization, but making sure that you focus on what you're good at and what you uh, know, right? Um, to, again, not have this duplication of efforts uh, because uh, I know I'm... Um, I've done my background in hum human rights. So for me, now I'm going to focus on the human right to water and sanitation uh, with a small organization. And this is how step by step, you know, uh, yes, you need a, a, a big target. You, we want a big dream, uh, dream big, sorry, <laughs> and big dreams too. Um, but uh, on everyday life, um, we try to uh, I think more have achievable targets and impact. And I think this would definitely be also an advice for us um, to the continuation uh, of the Water Action Agenda, which uh, commitment we want to target maybe and make sure that we achieve it. And then yes, there's a big vision and a big mission for all of us, but work together in really specific um, project and, and programs uh, Yeah, that we I dream. Right, thank you. But 30 seconds. Um, <laughs> I can imagine. Um, everybody is free to think about this like before they're going to bed tonight, obviously. Um, so next slide, please. Um, same question about your vision. Uh, Jacob, Noemi, you can follow up. Maybe somebody else wants to join in as well. Were you doing what is important to you, Charles? Uh, hi, yeah, thank you. Um, I think just to start off from, um, you know, the beginning, from the outset, I think what I saw for me was neither a big or small organization. What I saw was an organization, either big or small, that is very much concerned with the social aspect of water, because I believe water means different things to different people. And if I can be part of an organization that works around uh, ways in which people can be able to build capacity and be able to deliver on the water issues within the environment, because I think everything ties into either the social, economic, um, cultural, and political aspect of water as well. Um, so were we doing um, something that's important? I believe so, because I think that that's pretty much a really good way to be able to accelerate progress towards achieving um, SDG 6. When you put people at the center of of, of what you're doing. We talk about um, citizen science today. Um, I think that really ties in really well. And when you look at the majority of population that um, is, is, is suffering from, you know, the impacts of climate change and, and is really bearing the biggest brunt is, is the people that um, on an economic spectrum or basis um, are not really doing well. So you want to build solutions that were able to be able to um, help them alleviate the challenges based on 
their resources and how best you can build capacity in the communities. That's a bit of a long answer, but yes. <laughs> and to answer this one, then you're doing what's important to you. Yes. Um, yeah. So in that regard, we I would be definitely be doing uh, what I think is is the right thing okay. for me. Next slide, please. That's good. Um, and Charles, while we're talking now anyway, uh, is there somebody who can help you get to such a position in which you feel you're doing important work to yourself and to the world um, and which you envision as your dream job? Absolutely. Um, I think on a, on a career basis, uh, pretty much all of us are more inclined and very, you know, very open and keen to be able to find ourselves in spaces where we can find opportunities and, you know, very supporting people. So obviously different kinds of organizations that we have on this call as well, you know, do provide platforms where um, people can, you know, can help you uh, to get there. Um, I think, and that's a key thing why we have such kind of events because they really help to create that kind of connection. You never really know, um, you know, um, who can provide that springboard for you to be able to get to where you want to go. Uh, Noemi, Jacob, do you see some specific persons or roles that can help you get your dream job? Um, yes. Um, someone helped me get there. Yes, I think everybody has a role to play to, to kind of support me to get there. And I can't really point to one point, one person or one system, but I think um, everybody that you meet within the sector has a way that they contribute to your progress. It could be the ideas that they share with you. It could be the, the opportunities that they share with you. It could be the motivation or the encouragement that you get from the seniors. So I think it is the whole water sector that support each other to 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 get to where people want to get to all right so that's also why uh, the un water conference was important for example uh, to to make these linkages um all right so thanks for your stories it's it's inspirational uh, could we go to the next slide please and then the next slide again so we are going to need to talk about why do we need youth in the water sector um, and well i'm working i'm doing technical work in the water sector so i use this un perspective in a technical way as well because that's that's kind of how i think um, so next slide um, there's global water resources that we have they're under pressure uh, for example economic development uh, population growth and climate change um, so these are are huge challenges um, which are even getting worse which Makes which ensures that there's going to be in the future a huge demand for skilled people to solve those challenges because the challenges are getting bigger and bigger. Um, and we need to, uh, to ensure that there's plenty of water for everybody. Um, so that means that we have to start now by uh, giving youth the opportunity uh, uh, to, to achieve those positions that they want and they feel that they contribute to the solutions. Um, and that is to say, it is, we have to start giving internships, more internships. Um, there have to be uh, more funding available for youth and there have to be more education for youth in order to solve those challenges. So that is what I mainly took away from New York is there is gonna be a huge demand for those skilled people. And we have to start now by ensuring that they get to the right positions in the right time. Uh, that's my main takeaway. Um, next slide, please. Yes. So uh, we already talked about the 303030 30 Youth Target event. Um, I will briefly explain this for those who don't know. The 303030 30 target uh, was thought of by Noemi, who's in this call as well. Um, I'm presenting it now, but it was her idea. And this entails that 30% of all people working in the water sector are below the age of 30 by the year 2030. And this is just one step that we can ensure uh, that we have those positions uh, filled um, to combat the, the future challenges in the water sector. Um, so right now we are working together with World Water Net in Amsterdam, Wave Makers, the Kingdom of the Netherlands, and YEP, um, working together on a task force. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, 
Um, so these are the organizations that are now uh, that have signed the uh, the uh, the idea that they support the 3030 uh, target event. Uh, so the Water Youth Network, Central Asia Youth for Water, World Water Net, uh, FI, of which for which I'm working now here in Uganda. Um, so we have a great set of uh, organizations that should be able to take this forward and also are concerned with um, um, meeting the challenges ahead. Uh, so next slide, please. And what we are doing now with this 30, 30, 30 uh, target is that we are applying for funds to have more work on this, to make it like a real tangible uh, target that organizations are going to be trying to meet. Uh, we have a pilot in Waternet Amsterdam. Uh, they're a, a utility um, and they are also very focused on attracting more young people. So we are looking how that is going there and which lessons we can get out of this. And we will be presenting those lessons at, uh, for example, the Amsterdam International Water Week in Stockholm, uh, probably in Bali as well. Um, we need to get more people on board as well. So that's what we're doing now. Um, I think this was my last slide. Yes. And one other, uh, no, that was it. I'll come back to it later. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ice. Um, we'll move on to Christian. So Christian um, is also an IWA Group Force Fellow and um, currently a control specialist at Groomforce. So Christian, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Jacob, for the introduction. And thanks for uh, uh, mentioning that I'm mainly a technical guy. So I don't have a um, political or social studies uh, background. So for me, participating at such events as the United Nations uh, uh, water conference was a big learning and a big insightful events where I could get um, an, another side of, of this whole water agenda and uh, water action. Um, I could get insights, for example, of uh, next to solving the problems um, by technology, how big of a deal it is in certain parts of the world, in certain communities, for example, to manage water with the uh, culture with uh, considering uh, tradition and uh, even religion in some uh, some parts of the world. And one of my takeaways at this conference was um, I, I mostly participated in uh, technical events and there was a lot of focus on uh, using uh, tradition and experience to learn from, from seniors and build this into solution, this experience that they can pass to the next generations of water professionals. But also a major highlight was to use uh, more data-based uh, and evidence-based scientific uh, approaches. And um, so one of my uh, main, so to say, concerns was um, after attending these sessions at the United Nations uh, Water Conference um, was that I, I, I participated in one interactive dialogue and in many uh, discussion uh, sessions. Um, and there was a lot of talk about projects on country level, on community level, on uh, even in, in, in continental level. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, talk about uh, funds and uh, how uh, different countries collaborated. And after the conference, I started to look up these uh, projects and I started to uh, research a bit. Uh, are, are there something available for me I could use in my own uh, work, in my own uh, research? And in many cases, I found very insightful uh, data and very insightful ideas, white papers, uh, contributions to conferences, scientific uh, papers. But in most of the cases, um, these projects, it's, it's, it, they, 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 I, I could read what they are, uh, um, they are solving, what it is about, but I couldn't really reuse it and, 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 and reuse the material from, from these uh, from these, uh, yeah, uh, mentioned uh, projects. So, um, so ba basically, um, I, 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 one of my main concern is that it has also been mentioned that the lack 
of transparency and promotion of data in the water sector is slowing down the process of achieving the SDG 6 uh, goals. And I think that this is something we, 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 we need to keep going promoting and we need to uh, uh, learn how to uh, kind of unlock this conflict of interest between the private sector and, uh, and, and, and public uh, stakeholders and also research institutions. So that was from my side. Uh, I don't have a presentation, Jacob. Thank you very much, Mark, for your contribution. I think I'll move on and hand it over back to Charles. Yeah, thanks, Jacob. And um, thanks to the panelists. Uh, I think now is a pretty, pretty good um, discussion um, looking at perspectives post the United Nations Water Conference and what's the way forward. Um, we could, I think we could pick up a few questions from the chat box. Um, I'll, I'll pick up one here and please feel free to be able to answer the questions. Um, I reckon Jacob, you did answer one of them, but I think it'd be good to hear from the panelists for what they have to say. So there's a question here um, that says, yes, it's pretty much around asking, where do you think young people would play a more a vital and important role um, on the international side of things to be able to influence progress in the sector. Um, so it'd be good to hear from, yeah, from you, Chris, to start off. What do you think young people would play a more pivotal role uh, in terms of how we can then be able to be able to accelerate progress and influence change in the sector yeah so i'm i'm a very practical guy i would say in my view i would take it down to the utility level so what my experience is when i go out and i talk with uh, utilities and i discuss uh, uh, solutions with them are you uh, digitalized are you using uh, sustainable solutions what i face what i'm faced with is that the average um age at these utilities is very uh, high. So I talk with senior engineers who are close to go on pension and uh, close to retire and uh, they, they would just disappear. But I would say that I would fill these gaps at the utility levels. And in my view, that's the, that's the place where you can make real impact because that's close to implementation and, and, and practice. Thank you, Chris. Um, I think I, I do very much agree with you when it comes to utilities as well, uh, because um, statistics at the minute with the international labor organization, they estimate what they're calling a silver tsunami in the in the water sector. And um, uh, it's believed by 2030 for the United States only um, that at least about 35% uh, of utility um, providers, workers within within the utilities will be retiring. And that means that um, there'll be need for more people to be able to take up those jobs. And when it comes to the water sector itself, the water sector only represents about 1% of the labor force across all sectors. So that really shows you what the challenge looks like. And that's why we need more young people. Um, and especially also, I think young people with the dynamism that they bring to the table and the innovation as well, that really helps to be able to um, to scale up technology and be able to, to really help uh, improve the sector. Um, without really going very deep in that, um, I just want to also double check what, uh, what Naomi thinks in that regard. Where do you think we can have more young people to make a difference? Well, with my position at the World Youth Parliament for Water for the last two years, I've been focusing on really the policy and governance and institutional level, right? So, but all answers, I think, and angles that we're gonna bring are valid as an individual um, at your work in your company or as a, a young activist in a global organization or a national chapter of IWA or World Youth Parliament for Water. I mean, in all the aspect of, of um, our engagement, I would say, uh, we can contribute, uh, we just need to find um, 
our uh, where we want to put our effort, I would say. And there's also one that we cannot neglect. It's education because it all starts with education. And this is where also WaveMaker is doing a good job by, by bringing uh, the water and climate more attractive with sports and a more positive narrative around it. Uh, same as art, like uh, there's a really big need of um, a transdisciplinary approach to reflect on all the values of water again, because um, as a water diplomat as well, you can become a specialist on, on water and peace. Uh, uh, so um, we need all of those uh, aspects of water, agriculture, energy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but yeah, so for me, it was uh, trying, it is, not it was, it is trying to um, influence at the UN level, uh, UN institutional level, the importance uh, of young people and making sure that whenever they need a young person, that it's not just tokenism, and I help them um, to make sure that they have the most appropriate speaker on a panel or the most appropriate uh, a person giving feedback on a on a report on a document um, that is not just because we have our at of youth or under thirty or under thirty five, but because we are a professional, an expert on that topic, plus our at of young people, which is different. We we need to really flip uh, this this and and so they have this shift in their mind that we want to be included as professional and young in my opinion and not just young professional but yeah it's a it's it's a little bit difficult to um and it's also a conversation we had at uh, water uh, europe uh, innovation uh, last week um that uh, the innovation is also to come from the social aspect and not only the technical aspect uh, and the scientific aspect um and this is what we need to push for Fabulous. Um, I do very much agree with you on the policy aspect of things. Um, I think the political um, aspect of water itself, which really uh, underpins policy, is is of very great significance. So if we can get young people to be able to influence policy, and I do very much agree with Rafa um, in, the, in the chat box, as well as Jacob, um, who did highlight the fact that there's need to be able to create opportunities for young people to build capacity um, and be able to contribute solutions. They'll be able to help, you know, um, solve the local challenges that they are facing. So I think that's very key and that ties into education as well, which is a very important aspect that you talked about. Um, so, so yeah, definitely those are very valid points. But before I move on to a quick summary, maybe we're good to hear from Ines what you think um, your thoughts are on what we can get more people to do to do good in the sector. Yeah, thank you, Charles. <laughs> um, well, um, I'm always impressed on, on, on having these conversations and listening carefully. I can feel that there's such a huge momentum and let's keep that attitude. To be honest, what I feel over time, because I'm right in the limit, right? I'm 35 now, I'm turning 36. What I can tell you is that I am sure that I will enter my seriority, seniority with the intention of making youth visible, visible and um, to, to ensure that the activities that are being you know, led by youth uh, have a place um, in water. Um, I, you know, I'm very much aligned with with Noemi and uh, and Giz here with the wave makers um, on the need for uh, going beyond uh, the water sector. Actually, yesterday I, I was like, we I, I almost feel like I should stop calling it sector. Uh, I think that I should we should have a, a, a attitude that is more water is princess present everywhere and of course there's a part of it that works kind of in the, as a sector but it's impossible to explain the value of water and then try to discuss the implications to society if we keep limiting water conversation to water sector it's not water sector trying to connect with energy sector is water is in energy and water is in health and water is in and water is in uh, it's not part of or side of. 
And, and I feel like for that, we need to make sure that when we discuss climate, we discuss water. And I feel like we have a long journey there. So if in one way, uh, I do believe that the, the, the water conference in New York was a huge boost for us to identify who are the partners, give us some literacy on diplomacy as well. Um, I also think that we need to put more effort into the climate agenda and make water visible there because it is. Um, and that's actually what I thought about when I closed my eyes. <laughs> it was, I was in a room and someone would come in and I would explain how water is visible in your world. And then the person would go up and then the person would come in and I say, so this is where water is. <laughs> in your world I mean, and I feel like that is the work that all of us will need to do as water ambassadors let's say um, but thank you Charles for, for giving back the word to me fantastic uh, those are really really um, good reflections um, Ines and um, I could not agree more um, I, I think I think we really need to be able to um, take initiatives forward and, and really get you know get ourselves out there especially as young people um, today we talk about this skills gap um, in the sector, which is which is a really big challenge. So, so yeah, um, thank you very much for your contributions, everybody. Um, uh, we will quickly crack on. Um, I think we're right on time, probably just two minutes over. So to, to just attempt to just give a really quick summary of our discussions today, um, we, it's always really good to give a recap of what we talked about. Um, and that really helps to, you know, pinpoint uh, a couple of um, takeaways from the discussions. So we did obviously kick off with the a little bit of um, an overview or an introduction to the United Nations Water Conference. Um, I think the key objectives there for the conference, as Jacob uh, put it succinctly and really well, was that the objective was to make sure it was inclusive, um, to also make sure it was action oriented and very cross-sectoral, and the next did echo that as well, saying, um, you know, water underpins everything. I love to say that water is always a nexus to pretty much every sector. Um, you know, it's part of our life every day. So we did kick off on that note, and then we did quickly move on to look at an overview of the organizations. We looked at what uh, Webmakers United is doing. So Heist did give a really good overview there of their activities. Uh, in the sector, and, and I think it was really good to see, um, to, to really touch on the, um, the, the challenge, the, the United Nations Water Conference um, um, challenge that you talked about, uh, and, all the, and all the amount of people that you reached. Um, so um, that was really, really good to see. You talked about reaching 62 nationalities, and as well as 201 teams. Um, I think that was that was really good to see. Um, um, Heiss also talked about um, the 30-30-30 um, um, you know, commitment that's more focused on identifying gaps in the sector. I think that was really good to see as well, because I think the underlying issue here is unless you understand what the challenges are and what the future looks like, then only can you be able to um, to devise solutions or be able to respond to those challenges. So that's where it was really good to understand where the world is going, uh, what the stats look like uh, in the future and how young people can be able to contribute. Um, Ines also did uh, pretty much take us through an overview of the International Water Association, um, uh, pretty much highlighting that there are 41 um, country chapters so I would advise the audience, please be able to check with International Water Association um, where you can be able to be part of a conversation, whether it's a country chapter or the wider, the wider um, youth community that we have that's ongoing. I think it will help you to build, uh, build yourself professionally and be able, to be able to build networks as well, which really helps to, to be able to create that uh, exchange of knowledge. Um, so then we had a first panel session uh, where we're looking at youth engagement uh, at the United Nations Water Conference. Um, Naomi did um, share briefly the, how the uh, World uh, Youth Parliament for Water was highly engaged at the conference. So I think that was really good to hear as well. 
Uh, I did come in briefly as well. I've talked about my um, engagements at the conference um, across a number of thematic discussions. And, um, and I think the key discussion was that the conference was a platform for young people to be able to uh, contribute the ideas. And I think the key thing was to make the voices heard as, as key stakeholders in the sector and as obviously uh, future water leaders. We did then move on to a second panel discussion um, that looked at what are the post perspectives um, after the United Nations Water Conference. So I think the key, um, the key discussions there were around the fact that uh, I think Heist did highlight that I think moving forward, it will be very key that there is sustainable finance, financing for projects and initiatives that will be able to get more young people to make a tangible contribution to the sector. And I think education as well is a very key aspect because capacity building is everything. Um, without capacity building, we can't really make our progress. And I think um, that pretty much summarizes our discussion for um, this event. And uh, with that said, I would then like to pass on to Isabella to give us a closing remark and a bit of an update uh, on what's, what are the next steps. Over to you, Isabella. Thank you, Charles, on this. And thank you for everyone that joined us today during this IWA YWP get together, as well as the speakers that were uh, present here today. So I would like to invite you all for some of the upcoming IWA events. We have a regional call next um, week that will be focused on young water professionals in the Americas. So if you are from Latin America and the Caribbean, as well as North America, please feel free to join. You just need to scan the QR code to, be, to register. And we also have a webinar on compliance with water supply and sanitation laws that we will be offering some insights and best practice. And this is in partnerships with um, Vietnam uh, Water and Sanitation uh, Agency that we have as partners. And of course, I would like to invite you all to attend, especially if you're based um, in African countries, our Water and Development Congress and Exhibition that we'll be uh, hosting in Kigali uh, in December. Again, do scan the QR code and check the, the latest uh, updates regarding this Congress. Finally, if you have any questions about membership fees, I have some information here. I will be sharing this uh, PowerPoint presentation online. So you will be able to download it and, and check it. And if you are a young water professional, remember to use the discount code that we have, especially for you. So it's IWAYWP23 and you have until the um, uh, end of December to, to register and use this. And once again, thank you all for coming. And it was a pleasure to be here with all of you today. So thank you and bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you for joining. Thank you, everybody.